Hey guys, I'm finally back with a new video. Um, this will be the first of the new All About videos that I'm making. Um, so a lot of you know that there's been some canon changes, storyline changes with characters. Um, so that's kind of what we're going to be addressing today. Um, this is going to be the new story, new canon, all the old stuff gone, done, didn't exist, didn't happen. This is what's new and this is what, you know, is canon now. Um, yeah, so everyone's been curious about what went on in Bury a Friend and what the whole story behind that was. Um, and a lot of people know the story kind of from Tumblr and stuff, but we're just going to go over it today in YouTube so everyone knows. Um, so I am here with my friend. Hey guys, uh, it's Ren, also known as Matt, on here. You can call me whichever. And we're going to explain Patient Zero to you guys. If you guys don't know what Patient Zero is, that's basically the ship name for the two characters uh, that you see in the Barrier Friend video, Lucy and Monozuki. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's basically what we're going to be going over today. Um, yeah, just going over pretty much everything about them. Starting from the top. Start. Yep, starting from the top. So I guess I'll start, well, I mean, Lucy is my character. And Monozuki is mine. Um, so I guess I'll just start with some basics about Lucy, just for anyone who's new or anyone who needs a refresher, I guess. Um, Lucy, his full name is Luciano Senza. He is Italian. Um, he was born in Rome, Italy. Um, he is, at the beginning of the story, he is 19 years old. Um, That's most of that. He goes by Lucy because it's shorter and he thinks it's cute. Um, and then these characters are in fact both uh, like Boku no Hero characters, both our own original Boku no Hero characters. So they have what are called quirks, basically anime superpowers. Um, so Lucy's quirk basically, um, when he commits enough sins, he can turn into the fun little demon man that y'all saw in Bury a Friend. Um, but he's not a demon. He's not a demon. He is a human. But his quirk just allows him to take that form based on the sins he commits. Um, so that's that. Um, so yeah, brief history of him. He was born in Italy. Um, both his parents were quirkless. They did not have powers. So when his power manifested when he was younger, they did not know how to deal with it. He accidentally maybe killed his dad which was bad, and then his mom kind of was afraid of him and abandoned him at a church where he was taken in by a bunch of priests and lived in a monastery until he was probably around 15 or 16 years old. And then he, you know, gathered up some money and, you know, sweet-talked the priest into letting him go to this hero school in Japan because that's totally what he wanted to do because no other reason. Oh, Just well. for fun. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, he moved to Japan when he was about 15 or 16. And that's, then he just started going to UA, you know, the school from Boku no Hero. And he was in the hero course and basically he just lied to everyone. Cause he actually wanted to be a villain cause he thought it'd be fun. So that's what he did. Yeah, my turn? Yes. Okay. Uh, my character is the doctor character from Barrier Friend. His name is Monozuki Kirukami. He uh, may look very old, but he's only 28. Um, I don't know what else you said about Lucy in the very beginning part. <laughs> <laughs> LOL. Uh, I don't know what you said. I'm gonna be real with oh you. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Where he was born, all that sort of stuff. Uh, well, he's Japanese. He was born in Japan. Um, he, his parents actually did have quirks uh his mother's quirk was basically just level she can maintain her balance very well that's it and yes i know that sounds lame and not like a superpower but if you watch the show book new hero there are plenty of people who have powers that are not really all that super um <laughs> and his dad basically can cause localized numbness with contact like if he touches someone with all five of his fingers their body part will go numb 
that's basically it. Um, as for him, his quirk is very, very scientific and chemistry based, so I'm gonna give a condensed version of that. Um, basically, he can control the flow of ions from his body into someone else's body and cause their muscles to react in a certain way. Um, as you all know, I'm hoping, uh, the body moves because of bioelectricity that is produced inside our bodies from ions, things that we get from the foods that we eat and things like that. So he can send ions from his body into another person's body, creating a reaction that therefore makes a muscle either lock up or, um, you know, loosen, whatever, depending on which ions he sends over. Uh, what else? Um, his history. Oh boy, that's bloody. <laughs> anyway, um, so he sure was born <laughs> sometime on Sunday, and, uh... You know what day specifically? I don't know, it was a Tuesday. No, I mean... Uh, <laughs> God, you didn't say Lucy's birthday. Oh, well, Lucy's birthday is October 30th. Already with this, we're already making it yes. gross. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, Monozuki's birthday was on December 25th. He is a Christmas baby, and that is the worst <laughs> thing that could ever happen to anyone. Um, <laughs> so, um, anyway, he was born with a basically disorder. I have no specific name for it because it doesn't align with a lot of documented disorders, um, but basically it causes him to be very apathetic on a clinical level. Um, he doesn't understand emotion very well, he can't process it within himself, so he's very non-expressive and doesn't really understand other people's emotions or the causes of them. And he has a hard time recognizing them in other people, like reading people's expressions and things like that. Um, so he was always kind of an odd child from the beginning. Uh, he gave his dad very weird vibes, you know, having sort of like an unresponsive baby and toddler. Um, he wasn't cool with that. I don't know. It was weird. Um, his mom always loved him, but... Um, when he was about three years old, there was an earthquake, um, and before the heroes could get there to rescue everyone, um, you know, stuff started coming down. He got trapped under a bookcase, and he figured his mother would save him. He called out to her, and she was too scared to do anything, um, which ended up, you know, with him getting hurt. Uh, a lamp fell, like, near his face, and shattered like around the area of his left eye which is why he has like eye scars and his left like almost entirely blind in his left eye mm -hmm. after that um she did love him though but sometimes big scary um <laughs> am i right <laughs> uh so that didn't help with him forming connections and stuff his understanding of what relationships were was messed up from the very beginning uh, and that doesn't make it any better. <laughs> his father leaves when he's around four, so a year later he's fed up with it. Weird little family. Uh, Monozuki causes way too much trouble than he's worth, and he just leaves them. Um, uh, Monozuki's mother then has to like take on all of the responsibility of like working, being a single mother. Uh, it doesn't turn out great. She ends up dying later when he's like seven um also not a great time he wasn't very emotional about it he was just very curious as to why she died because it was an accidental death um from her like falling down a set of stairs and you know pretty much his only thoughts were why didn't her quirk save her when that's what it was supposed to do so when people discovered her body, it may have been a little mutilated because he really wanted to see why it didn't work. Just a little bit. Just a little mutilated. Just a little. Dissected. <laughs> um, you know, um, sometimes you're like that. 
Um, and so he gets sent to hospital for a little while under observation, a lot of trials, a lot of assessments. Um, and then he gets placed under his grandfather's care on his mother's side pretty much until after high school, near the end of high school. Grandpa dies, whatever, he moves on, goes to college, goes to university for becoming a doctor, gets kicked out of university <laughs> for becoming a doctor, so he does not complete his doctor's degree. Um, maybe got a little bit arrested. Maybe got a little bit arrested, and that's why he got kicked out. He got arrested for owning um, organs that he purchased off the black market, which is very illegal, um, because he wanted to conduct experiments. Uh, that's a quick summary, right? That's yeah. as quick as I can make it. And then it. he, you know, sets up in a little town. Oh, yeah. He, after he gets out of jail, he sets up a clinic in a smaller town, further away from UA and all that all the heroes, um, and just basically, you know, has an illegal practice where he, you know, uh, treats villains, mostly, because, you know, villains need care too, they get hurt too, and it's not like they can go to regular hospitals, so they go to him, and he fixes them up and charges whatever he feels like. Villains are people too. Villains are people too. <laughs> <laughs> LOL. And, oh. uh, you know, gets to run secret experiments in his basement and stuff like that. What do the villains call him? Oh. <laughs> the villains call him, uh, Minchi, which is, like, short for mincemeat, because he is Dr. Mincemeat, lol. They never know where he gets his stuff, uh, whose parts he uses, or anything like that. It's really not that shady, but people like to make up rumors and stuff because he's very mysterious and aloof, so... Yeah, he does do experiments though. He does use body parts though. He <laughs> continues to purchase things off the black market. Lol. He likes to do genetic experiments, quark research, um, just a lot of illegal genetic stuff. Mm -hmm. He takes samples from each and every one of his patients without them knowing, which is very, very illegal and unethical. What does he care about ethics? What does he care about ethics? So yeah, there you that, go. That's him. That's him. So uh. Yeah, I guess we can go into how they, uh, become, a, you know... A thing. Intertwined with one another. Yeah, how their lives cross or whatever. So, uh, Lucy, he graduates from UA, does all that sort of stuff, you know? Didn't run into any problems at school. He was careful. Um, didn't make his alternate life known to anyone. Um, very secretive. So, when he's uh, about 19, he's a villain, um, just kind of low, low time, doesn't, isn't super well known or anything like that, working under other villains, getting jobs, that sort of thing. So, one evening, he is evading police, uh, running across rooftops, all that sort of business, chasing, montage, whatever. Um, he just about gets away from them, you know, they're out of sight. He can't see the, you know, police car lights anymore, and, you know, he thinks he's home, home scot-free. Um, and then he just, you know, he breaks one of his little heels and goes falling off the building and breaks his neck on the concrete below and dies pretty much instantly. And he is dead. The end. <laughs> oh, that's the whole story. <laughs> he died. He died. Um, well, turns out that that works perfectly for, uh, Monozuki, because he needs, it, basically, subjects for his experiments all of the time. Um, people are very disposable, uh, their parts are necessary for certain projects, and it's best to get them when they're fresh, you know? Something about gray robbing just doesn't produce the right results. So, uh, he keeps a CB radio, a police scanner, in his, uh, office, where he just, like, listens to, like, he keeps it on to hear hero activity in his area, and if he feels like there might be bodies, um, he, you know, goes out to the general area just to, just to see, just to look, just to look if he can find any good test subjects, and, um, he's trying out something brand new, and he needs, like, someone recently deceased. So, 
that night he happened to go out because he heard about the chase and stuff um and boom he comes upon one dead little twink and he just goes is this free and he picks it up (laughs) (laughs) he picks lucy up stuffs him into a duffel bag takes him back to the lab and that's where the fun happens (laughs) um you know so set everything up surgery time um basically as we all know when you break your neck you die (laughs) um but basically what happens when you break your neck is all of your your nervous system runs through your spine when you break your neck it severs the ties in your nervous system so what he does is you know opens him up at the back of the neck that's why lucy has the new scar there Mm -hmm. opens him up uh reconnects the severed nerves and replaces like transplants new nerves on the ones that are way too damaged to basically you know restore all those connections so that lucy's brain can still send signals to the rest of his body and then using his quirk which you know forcibly ejects ions into the body including the brain um he basically like revives him like a like a human defibrillator Mm -hmm. and it actually works like after hours and hours of surgery and making sure everything is right it works he's able to bring him back to life and that's how that happens and then lucy is alive again and is like what is happening thinks that this creepy doctor just kind of kidnapped him for whatever reason. He doesn't remember dying. He doesn't think he's dead because how could he be alive if he was dead? Uh, So he does not believe him when, you know, he's told that he was dead. He's like, okay, sure. Yeah. (laughs) Also, Monazuki's, like, bedside manner is terrible, you know? Just wakes up from being dead starts asking a million questions about his condition and stuff like not even like how are you feeling no 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 (laughs) god yeah poor lucy has to like stay in bed for a while it's like months yeah has like the whole neck brace all that sort of business i think he had like cast on his arm too Mm -hmm. he had some other casting and like he had to have like ribs re position and shit it he spends a lot of time on bed rest he's stuck there um, what sucks is that the next time that Lucy goes, falls asleep or loses consciousness, whichever, um, Monozuki, like, discovers that shortly after falling asleep, he shuts down. His body shuts down. The brain no longer sends signals to the rest of his organs, and he just experiences total organ failure and dies once again. Um which is shit Uh, the end (laughs) yeah no so basically every time lucy falls asleep dr man has to wake him up again with his quirk um basically to keep him from permanently dying yeah only lets him sleep for about six hours four to six hours at a time because he doesn't want him to experience death tm (laughs) Um, he doesn't want him to start decomposing because no this was already successful to a degree this is the first time he's been able to bring someone back to life um so he's you know he's gonna try to figure out a way to fix it just gonna need time and research yeah so, yeah for now it's basically up to onizuki to just bring him back to life whenever he needs to yeah lucy ends up uh uh developing really bad insomnia because he does not want to go to sleep because he, you know, doesn't want to die again because he doesn't know if he'll wake up. Um, He doesn't know if he will be woken up. Uh Um, He also just wants to mess around. He likes to just poke around, uh, touch things. Um, Yeah, and at some point, you know, Monozuki gets tired of Lucy just wandering around the clinic at night while he's sleeping, just touching everything and moving his stuff. Um, so he basically, uh, mandatory invite (laughs) to come upstairs with him. Basically, the way the clinic is set up is the basement, room for experiments and storage and all that stuff. The first floor being the clinic itself where he treats patients, and then the second floor being where he lives. It's like a loft type deal. He lives up there. Um, so he just tells Lucy to come up, um whenever it's 
sleep time so mm -hmm. that he can monitor, basically, and not have him messing with all his shit. Lucy basically takes it as, oh, I live here now. So he's just there whenever he wants to be. And, you know? Share the bed, all that. Yeah, I mean, it's easier to uh, keep him under control if he has him there in the same bed. Mm -hmm. um, um, right. So, answering a couple questions on the, well, if he doesn't like having Lucy, why does he keep him? Uh, easy. First of all, that test is incomplete. Like I said, uh, Lucy is the first time that Dr. Man has been able to bring back someone from the dead. And yet, the project itself is not completed and didn't have fully satisfactory results because Lucy still dies every time he sleeps. So it's not really a win. He's not cool with that. Um, so he's gonna see if he can figure out a way to fix that. Basically, the experiment isn't over, so you can't get rid of him. Um, also, just... I don't know, it's kind of a pride thing. <laughs> keeping him around because, well, first of all, he did that. No one else in the world can say that they brought back someone who died. Just that, him. That's his. Um, that's his. Uh, but also... You know, it's just not... It doesn't sit right with him. That it's not exactly how he wanted it to be. He wants perfection. So he's gonna keep trying on that one. It's just gonna take some time. Um, as for other experiments that he does, uh, well, he's basic, his biggest drive is to possibly create eternal life for himself. So to unlock immortality um, via science. Find some way, somehow, to live forever. Um, because, basically, his main drive is knowledge. The knowledge of things, how things work, uh, finding and acquiring more knowledge, and, you know, there are only so many things that he can learn in one lifetime, so why not live forever, learn all things? Mm. Mm -hmm. Life hacks. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> that's basically his, his main goal there. And uh, having Lucy around makes it a little easier to test things because you should never ever test things on yourself because if they go wrong, you cannot fix them. Yes. Um, another side dealio that he's got going on that's actually pretty important, which should be his main dealio, but you know how it is, um, is uh, he, he has uh, the big cancer, so that's not cure. That doesn't have a cure. Which cancer? He has... Myeloid leukemia. I don't know if I pronounced that right, but I'm pretty sure I did. Uh, <laughs> he has leukemia. Uh, that's not a quick fix, for sure. Um, and uh, it's not like he can go to a regular doctor. It's not like he would. Come on. <laughs> Come on. He's a whole doctor. <laughs> He's like, I don't need anyone else. Um, and that's that. So, yeah, he's kind of, he's running out of time. On that too. Uh, the thing about it is that it's not acute just yet. It's still a chronic uh, cancer, which means that it's not killing him right this moment per se. Um, it's lingering. It's there, and he has side effects from it. But um, he's, it's not killing him in this exact moment. But that can change at any given time. At any point when you have cancer, it can change from chronic to, to acute, like, overnight. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he's, you know, Russian roulette over there. Keep an eye on that. Keep an eye on that. And he actually can't use Lucy as his subject for those kinds of tests because Lucy is not the right blood type. So he needs to keep looking for basically another living uh, subject so that he can test things on. He has an idea of how to um, figure out a way to outlive cancer, lol. But he needs the right subject, and Lucy's blood type is not the right one, so he can't use him like at all for those. Yeah, and why is Lucy's blood type not correct? Um, because Dr. Man's blood type is AB, which means um, that 
he can receive any, I believe it is. I think so, yeah. I believe it's any. Um, but Lucy's blood type is O, which mm -hmm. means that he can only receive O type yeah. blood. Basically, Dr. Mann's general experiment is he has DNA of another person he knew while he was still in college, and their quirk specifically had vaguely gene-altering abilities. So, based on just, like, a scientific hypothesis, he can conclude that transplanting a part of one person might create, like a double quirk, you know? He hasn't tried it out yet. He's gonna try and figure it out. But if he can um, successfully, you know, do a transplant of, you know, the person with the gene-altering quirks organ into another person and have them successfully re... Uh, what is it? Reproduce that quirk, basically. Um, then he can do that to himself. And just fix his genes. Theoretically. He hasn't tried it out yet. It's still a theory. But anyway, he can't use Lucy because the um, other person's blood type was B type. Mm -hmm. And Lucy can't have that. It's going to reject it. Mm -hmm. Waste of time. Yeah. So that's hot. Lucy is a, you know, he's around. Doesn't really know why some of the time. He would like to help, but you know, he can't. So he does what he can and just helps around the clinic and all that sort of stuff, doing chores. He also just doesn't know about the cancer. Yeah, he lot. doesn't know about the cancer either. He's just like, wow, this old man. He also <laughs> doesn't know how old he is oh, well. for a really long time. He just thinks he's like some like 50 year old man. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, and Lucy, isn't in the greatest mental state after uh being dead um it's pretty bad his mental state starts to deteriorate a little bit he gets uh just a little bit uh obsessed with uh monozuki um to the point where you know he wants him uh you know it's how it be sometimes um, I mean, I feel like that's <laughs> fairly regular. You want things that you can't have. Pretty much. Basically. Plays hard to get. But yeah, he gets real obsessive over him and doesn't like when he's not paid attention to or Monozuki is paying attention to other things or whatever. So, you know, Lucy wants to be the only one having to do with, you know, the weird experiments he's running. Hello. Oh. So, as you see, recipe for disaster. Mm-hmm. Um, what else? How they feel towards one another. <sighs> it's very complicated. <laughs> yeah, it's incredibly complicated. So, um, their relationship is... Damn, there's no other word except for complicated. Hello. Oh. Um, basically, there are a lot of things that just fall into the gray when it comes to feelings and such, because Monozuki himself can't, like, really feel, feel emotion. And Lucy feels too much. Yeah. So it's bad. So, like, and that's, again, not something he ever really explains to Lucy until way later. Yeah, Lucy just thinks he's stupid. Just, Monozuki's not a sharing kind of person. Mm -hmm. He'll answer questions if you ask him directly, but Lucy is idiot dumbass who doesn't <laughs> ask him anything and just jumps to conclusions, so be like that, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Lucy just really wants to be uh, liked. Well, he wants to be cared about. He pretty much wants to be anything for him, so he doesn't mind being an experiment because it's something. He's still there. He's still living there, sharing a bed with this man. Oh, well. So he's like, all right, that's pretty sick. Well, 
And then eventually Lucy gets more needy and uh, annoying um, and just absolutely terrible. Mm -hmm. And it drives. Yeah, it drives Onozuki fucking insane all the time. Um, so to get Lucy off his back, he just kind of like caves into whatever Lucy wants because it's easier to just give him what he wants and then continue working than to try and make him stop. Mm -hmm. So, plus half the time it really isn't like a big deal other than it's a distraction. So, mm, whatever. Yeah. He'll do it. Who care? Um, th that being said, one of the main things that Lucy always will be annoying about and uh, want a lot of is sex. Just wants yeah. <laughs> to have sex with him a bunch. And, um, Dr. Man, yeah, couldn't care less, really. Um, yeah, of course, he has physiological reactions to being aroused, lol. Um, but it's not a priority for him mm -hmm. at all, ever. And Lucy sure does make it a priority. Yep. So he'll often just cave and do, do whatever it. Lucy wants and then get on with his work. <laughs> yeah. Lucy is a terrible little man. He has a lot of feelings, a lot of emotions, and, uh, you know, a lot of energy. <laughs> Energetic little lad. Gotta uh -oh. tire him out somehow. Mm-hmm. Well, and I mean, Dr. Man can just zap him and then done. Yeah. Yeah. And it works out at One the end. One and done. Um. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, eventually their feelings... It's sort of, like... Shift. Yeah. Yeah, Lucy, uh... Eventually starts getting real... Sad. Real sad that, uh... He's just kind of trapped with this man who will never feel anything for him. So that kind of sucks. Oh, well. <laughs> Except for after everything. Yeah. Uh, is it? You said, well, yeah. I well. said, is it before or after... <laughs> He starts feeling it, you know, after, uh, I'm like, how do I even explain it? After big events. We should just cover Barry a Friend, though. Yes. Yeah, it's probably easier to just go over the plot line of Barry a Friend, uh, and then it'll be easier to explain things jumping off of that. Yeah. So it starts out with what we talked about before, which was police scanner... Uh, Dr. Man finding Lucy, um, you know, the scar on his neck, uh, being a little freak, all that fun stuff. Yeah. Um, then, sure, don't remember <laughs> the right. order of things. Yeah, I, I'm Let me, not 100%. <laughs> let me pull it up real on quick. On how you, oh my god, keep the sound off. Oh. Yeah, uh... You know, Lucy being a little, little freak. creep, um, not yes. leaving him alone. Uh, oh yeah, watches him when he sleeps. He sure does. Because that's just a fun little thing that he likes to do. Oh, um, it's not that, like, it's not that Monozuki hates him. It's that Monozuki is not used to him. Mm -hmm. He's used to being alone and unbothered, and that's the way he likes things. He doesn't like being disrupted from like his routine, his way of doing things. So it takes some time, there's some build, before he gets used to having Lucy around. Mm -hmm. So, yes, a lot of the beginning stuff, you'll see him looking angry or annoyed. He's not really... He's just inconvenienced. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah Lucy, doesn't like that. <laughs> Lucy always be watching him, watching him work, uh, all that sort of stuff. Um, you know? Just creepy little man. Um, I think it shows um, Lucy on the table needing to be revived yeah. as he does mm -hmm. because when he goes to sleep he uh, dies, dies again and uh, the revival process after the surgery it's, it's not too much effort but obviously using your quirk is a personal effort especially when you're transferring something from your body into another person's body it, it sure does take something out of you yeah. Dr. Man has to drink. 
sport drink. Sport drink. <laughs> Replace his ions. He needs Gatorade. God. Um. Need those electrolytes. Yeah, it shows that sort of stuff, and then it shows you know him cutting his hand or whatever, which is a big bad, big no no. Yeah. Um, if you guys don't know this about leukemia specifically, it makes your blood very thin and watery, which means that your wounds, when you get them, they don't clot, uh, they don't close, they don't scab. You can literally just bleed out from something as small as a paper cut mm -hmm. and die. So he has to be very careful with injury and illness because both his immune system and his blood circulation, all that, is compromised because of being sick. So that's... That's what that scene was yeah, there for. A little symbolism. Um, and then, you know, the horny. Uh, you know, sometimes Lucy horny. And sometimes Dr. Ren is like, wow, if this will make you stop. Yep. Yeah. You know, Lucy's just a little freak. Steps on glass because he just would do that. And Dr. Man has a thing about... Glass. Yeah. Yes, as, uh, as I said way earlier, um, as a child there was an earthquake, uh, there was a shattering of the lamp over his face. The sound sort of acts like, um, it's a very unsettling sound for him. Uh, it creates, like, that high piercing sound that gives people migraines. Um, for him, I guess, because it's connected to that bad memory. Um, so it's sort of a, a very debilitating thing to have glass things shatter around him. A trigger. Yeah, it'll really put him out of commission for at least the rest of the day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, you know, squishing Lucy's little face because he talks too much. He just shut up. <laughs> he never shuts up. Then just some shots of the lab, all the stuff that he's working on. Um, it Art. shows, yeah, it shows him doing, you know, cutting open heart doing stuff yeah. experimenting he just be doing that um and then there's the coughing blood yep. into the hand it was just another 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 hint to show you that he's not doing great he's, he's a little sick he's sick he's just tired tired and frustrated of not not seeing results and then you Things know like that. lucy just wants attention at all times any given moment and you know it's he you know, it takes some getting used to. It's it's a big change for him. Yeah, Dr. Man pushes him away. Lucy gets big mad on top of just other things in his life. And, you know, he activates his quirk and goes all demon. And he's just mad, chases him around the lab. All that business, you know, pins him down, all that. And then, you know, it. there's a cut there's a break yeah there's a there's time in between mm -hmm. when uh lucy's like you know chasing him around yeah like after that oh. it's a cut <laughs> yeah he just uh basically um he like roughs him up and um monazuki has to like stay in bed for like a couple days there's plenty of like injuries he has to deal with like immediately because, again, he can't get cut. He, It's better for him not to get hurt because uh, he could die. <laughs> if Lucy, it's not properly taken care of. Lucy does uh, not feel bad about it. She's yeah, like, no, well, no regret. <laughs> um, should have paid attention to me. Um, and then, you know, the cut after that and just shows Lucy hiding under his desk. Uh, you know, he does that. Just bothers him pretty much. At all times. Always around, always bothering him. Um, and then it shows Monozuki doing at some, work, yeah, you know? doing some surgery at work, and Lucy is watching him, which he does all the time. Very unprofessional. <laughs> Just watches him doing stuff, gets the idea in his own little head that he's like, "Oh whoa, maybe I can get attention if I need medical attention." <laughs> you know, gets hurt somehow. Who knows how? pretty much gets hurt just so Monosuke can stitch him up. And, you know, he gets off on that a little bit. Yeah. Because freak. he's a little freak. Um, yeah. And then it cuts to them in bed. Yeah. Um, so, around 
this time has he already around this time he's already fixed him, right? I think so, yeah. Yeah, because right after this is stuff with the girl, right? Yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. Okay, so around the time of when it shows them in the bed and Monazuki uh, puts his arm over him. Okay, let me explain that because everyone's like, oh my god, they're in love. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> LOL. Um, no, that's not how that works. Anyway, um, so what's happening there is that by that time, Monazuki has figured out a way to fix Lucy so that he no longer needs to wake him up every morning. Um... It, he just goes has to do a secondary surgery on along Lucy's spine with his nervous system, just completely transplanting the ones that he had reconnected because they're deadened, which is why they turn off. Yeah. Um, when he's not fully conscious and running his body, get, gives him a full, you know, revamped surgery basically, and it works. And he doesn't need to be woken up, you know, with Monozuki's quirk. He is fine now. Um, one thing that he had um like sort of a habit that he developed before all that is with lucy and his insomnia and not going to sleep um even after monozuki told him to go upstairs and share a bed with him um he couldn't like keep make him stay yeah um because you know monozuki would fall asleep and lucy would just wait him out and then get up and go touch things so um and it would pretty much always wake him up because he's a very light sleeper but um just what he started doing was he would put an arm like over Lucy so that he wouldn't be able to get up without Monozuki immediately waking up and keeping him down. Yeah. So, um, that just basically, that scene, what it shows is that Monozuki's now used to him there. He's used to that behavior, even though he no longer needs to because Lucy sleeps just fine. Um, that's it. Now he's pretty much just like, Okay, this is how I do things now. Yeah. And Lucy's just like, oh, whoa, snuggle. Um, Yeah, and then it shows, you know, Lucy following him around. He's all having a good time. You know, after he's not dying anymore, he's like, sick, this is fun. I'm just staying here now. I just live here now. I just live here now. You can't get rid of me. Dr. Daddy. (laughs) Dr. Man's just like, please leave. The door's right there. And Lucy's like, hmm. Yeah, by that point, (laughs) by the time that he's figured out how... To keep Lucy alive, he's like, wow, experiment complete. You can go now. Um, and Lucy's like, no. <laughs> yeah, Lucy said no. Um, but yeah, basically up to that, it just shows him, like, walking around behind him, being all like, hee hee, happy, talking, whatever. Because he does that. Lucy just will talk a lot, all the time. Um, and, you know, gets the door slammed right in his little face. And he's like, ooh, don't like that. I, mm, No. <laughs> Stop ignoring me. <laughs> um, you know, Dr. Man working on his experiments. Lucy being big upset Um, uh, And then it shows him putting his hand down and crumpling some files that are on the desk. The files belong to the girl. The girl, yes. The girl's an important part. So the girl, her name being Hanami Futsuoka, she is a victim of a natural disaster that happens in town, um, and she dies in said natural disaster, which, uh, Monozuki picks up on, on his police scanner, shows up on the scene, takes her, um, she happens to be the right blood type, she's, uh, B positive, Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, perfect, boom, he can get going on the cancer experiments, which is great, because he's not doing great. He's actually been get deteriorating health-wise, um, so he really needs to start experimenting as soon as possible if he wants to, like, avoid getting real real sick and dying. <laughs> LOL. Mm-hmm. Um, so, he's got this girl. He's figured out sort of how to bring people back to life in a way. Um, so that's exactly what he does to her. Um... And he is just very interested by the prospect of possibly, you know, a breakthrough happening. Uh, which is why in the following scene, when he's seen talking to her, it shows him smiling. Again, he doesn't... <laughs> I said this on Tumblr, because he doesn't... It's not really a smile. We just really needed you guys to understand that he feels positively mm-hmm. towards having her around. Twitch. It's It was a twitch, but Lucy saw it. 
and Didn't blew it like way that. out of proportion. Yeah. Lucy's like, wow, he has never smiled at me ever. Who is this girl? What is she doing? I don't like her. But yeah. I don't like that he's spending time with her. I don't like that he's paying attention to her. Oh, well, again, it wasn't a smile. It was a twitch, like something that he literally cannot control. Um, because he's like, all right, not going to die of cancer, possibly. Sick. So, yeah, that's pretty <laughs> sick. Um, yeah. And then Lucy fucks it up. You know, gets real upset over that. Um, so yeah, later that night, uh, when Monazuki goes to sleep, whatever, Lucy sneaks out like he used to do real carefully uh, and just goes down to, you know, say hello. Just have a nice little chat with the girl and she's like, not, doesn't really know what's going on. Uh, Lucy gets offended when he, uh, asks her, like, you know, if, basically, if Dr. Man's talked about him. Uh, and she says no. She's like, I don't know what he, who, who are you? And, you know, he gets real upset over that and just uh, eviscerates her with a scalpel. Oh, well. Just absolutely bad. And just because of the, like, you know, Lucy not being in bed, whatever, uh, Dr. Man realizes and wakes up. Wakes up and, you know, bolts downstairs down. because, come on, what else could you possibly be doing? And yeah, it's a big bad. Lucy is basically sitting over this girl's uh, dead body and is, you know, uh, she's mush. Yeah, <laughs> basically. And, uh, again, like... It, ta- it really takes a lot to um, make Monozuki, I guess, get close to emoting. Um, but of course, the easiest one to the easiest one to reach the threshold of is uh, anger. So that's exactly what happens there. He gets a big, a sudden influx of just, you know, pure rage, um, because that's a. Uh, that's his chance right there, just going right down, down the drain. drain. Yep. Yeah, Lucy gets beat up, just, you know. She sure does. Pummeled, uh, and runs away for a little bit, but he comes back because where else does he have to go? Nowhere. He has nothing. Uh, so whether he likes it or not, he's staying. Whether Dr. Man likes it or not, he's staying. He has nothing else, so. Um, and then there's another cut. Um, With the blood and the liquid. Yeah. yeah. Um, you see the IV, all that, and boy howdy, Dr. Man is sick. Yeah. Um, so that's that's another scene that always gets misinterpreted or mm-hmm. weird theories mm-hmm. or whatever. Um, so basically it cuts from, you know, Monozuki getting mad and beating the crap out of Lucy um, to sometime later... Once Lucy's, like, already, like, come back and gotten over it, um, to show Monozuki actually getting chemo. That's, that's why he's hooked up. Mm -hmm. It's not, like, Lucy never lashed out at him. No. At that point in time. Or anything like that. It's just, he has to, he's forced to treat, you know, his cancer to keep it from, you know, killing him, basically. He's very sick. He's very, very sick. This is a last-ditch effort, and if the chemo doesn't work, like, if his cancer doesn't respond to the treatment, he will die. Um, Lucy just basically acts as his caretaker during this time because, you know, that's his man's now. Yeah, he's good. He takes care of him, all that. very sweet. Yeah, Dr. Man uh, relies on him. He sure does. He has no other choice. Um... Yeah, and it's during this whole treatment phase that Mazuki realizes that he can't really, as much as he's used to being alone, he can't really be alone, especially if he plans on, you know, existing forever. Because what if something like this happens again? Then Mm -hmm. what? Who's going to help him? So he's kind of, like, accepted the fact that he needs Lucy. He can't not have him. Yeah, and then, so, there's all that. Lucy's being all sweet, kisses him on the forehead. Very cute. Um, and then... Cuts to more in the future. More in the future. 
Much uh, more in the future. So Lucy gets a glimpse at uh, someone that he recognizes, uh, drops what he was doing, and you know, we got a little man. Got a little. Got <laughs> so it. this is where uh, Asanka shows up. Um, he has things going on. Um, <laughs> yeah, Sanka has his own health problems. Yeah, he has issues. He's a vigilante. He can't really see normal doctors, whatever. Hears about Monozuki through the grapevine, shows up, and, you know, he, he's there. And what's great for Monozuki is that Sanka happens to be B negative, which means it's perfect. Mm -hmm. It works out great. Sanka is now his new test subject. By this time, Lucy is well aware of, uh, you know, Dr. Man's cancer and how he needs mm -hmm. someone else to be the experiment, so he doesn't think it's going to be an issue when he basically is like, all right, cool, this guy's my experiment now. Yeah, but uh, Lucy still isn't a huge fan of that, mostly because he knows Sokka from school, and he knows that he's a little punk, and he doesn't trust it. Mostly he gets this weird paranoia and fear that Asanka is gonna like hurt Monozuki somehow or like get him in trouble or something he's just very he feels the need to protect him like this overwhelming urge to protect him because he doesn't trust Asanka at all how does Asanka feel about seeing him Asanka's just like a little didn't you die <laughs> yeah. why are you here god but weird you hitting that? Ugh, gross. <laughs> that is funny. He does directly ask, you know, Dr. Man, like, what's going on? What is this? <laughs> Basically, he's just sort of like, is this allowed? Are you having sex with that thing? Um, and Dr. Man, who has no tags and no bed, no bedside manner at all and doesn't care, is just like, yes. Um, and Slank is like, ew. Ew, gross. <laughs> um, good. <laughs> So yeah, uh, you know, Lucy wants to go after Sanka, whatever, and doesn't trust him, and Monozuki's like, no. Not this again. <laughs> Be having none of this. Um, but yeah, Lucy doesn't trust any of that. So of course he goes after Sanka as well. Um, problem is, Sanka's a lot more, uh, capable than the girl. Then, yeah. She was just... A little, like, 18-year-old girl. No quirk, nothing. Mm -hmm. Sanka is a, a, a whole man. Um, very strong. So, of course, Lucy tries to attack him, and Sanka... Just beats the shit out of him. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Shatters his whole arm. Yeah, breaks his arm, like, you know... Hits him a bunch. Hits him a bunch. <laughs> God. Uh, <laughs> it's real bad. Like, he could have killed Lucy if he wanted to. It's so funny that you can't say bad words because you could have just said fucks him up and that's well, it. Everyone gets <laughs> it. Everyone knows what fucks him up means. Well, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, just completely, you know, beats him to a pulp. And of course, you know, Monozuki steps in at some point and just kind of stops it because, all right, I did not sign up for this, please. Sanka's like, fine. There's, you know, Lucy barely even scratched him. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah, Sanka basically gets real mad that Lucy attacked him. It's basically, you know, keep your little thing on a leash or I'm out of here and you will not have my help. So, yeah. Yeah, so, whatever. Dr. Man has to patch up Lucy. Um, you know, he's not... He doesn't feel any type of way about it. He just basically patches him up and is like, don't do that. <laughs> That's basically it. <laughs> Stop. Stop. Um, and, uh, you know, then the crying bit. Oh, well, that's, yeah. that's so way it's, later. It, yeah, it's another cut that comes in, like, way, way later. Um, so basically the part of the end where you see Lucy, like, holding Dr. Man's face and crying is basically when he is confessing to him that, you know... Whether he likes it or not, he has fallen in love with this a horrible, horrible man. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, and he just has a lot of feelings that he can't keep inside anymore, and he knows it sucks and it's awful and whatever, but, you know, he loves him. 
and he doesn't know what to do about that. He just had to tell him. Um, and he does tell him, and this scene is interesting because uh, Monozuki actually uh, apologizes to Lucy, and that's the first, not for anything specific. <laughs> that's the first time he's ever really apologized to Lucy, or basically anyone, that he wasn't, like, forced to, lol. Um, but yeah, that just came of his own volition. Mm -hmm. Um, because he sure does not know how to deal with all this. He can basically suss out that Lucy is upset. And that's about it. That's he just like rolled a one on perception. He's like, <laughs> crying. I means think you sad. have a problem. You have there's something wrong. Um, <laughs> there's something wrong here. And Lucy's explaining, and he's like, mm, I'm sorry. Um, because he doesn't really, he gets it, but he doesn't really get it. So he's just there, like, yeah, don't know what to tell you or to do. Um, so Lucy just takes that as, oh no. He will never love me ever. Yeah. But he also doesn't ask like what the fuck all that is about until yeah. like sometime yeah, after. Yeah, yeah. yeah, after events of the video. Yeah. But yeah, Lucy, you know, starts it's an inverse of the beginning where you Yeah, know. Lucy's coming on to him. Now it shows Doctor Man coming on to Lucy. Because Doctor Man does need him around. And he does not want him gone anymore at this point. Mm -hmm. He's just there like no this is this is mine now. I made this. It belongs to me, um, and it's not going anywhere. So I need you to understand that you are staying here, <laughs> regardless of whatever is coming out of your mouth and eyes. Um, yeah, and Lucy just kind of is left with the fact that he's going to be with this, you know, man that doesn't love him for the rest of his life. And that's and it. That's the, that's the video. Great. I think that's a pretty pretty good sum. Obviously, that's not the end of the story. Yeah, yeah, not at all. <laughs> Plenty goes on. There's still much after more. that. There's so much more. Um, but that's all for Barry Friend, and I think that should be all for this video. I think yeah, it does this a good video job is very long. <laughs> summarizing everything, we got their back lore, we got their basics, covered a couple of the questions and the way out there theories that show yeah. up in the comments. Yeah, um, I mean, if there's any other questions, people can leave it in the comments. Who knows, maybe in the future we'll make, like, a follow-up? Maybe. Yeah. I also have the master post on my Tumblr. Yeah, yeah, there's which master post, which... have basically all the asks that we've answered about this, mm -hmm. all the important asks, and uh, it'll... I can link the master post in, in the, the description, description as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this video is very long, and I didn't mean it to be this long. Uh <laughs> enjoy the paints. Enjoy the speed yeah. paints. Um... um. But yeah, if anyone has any other questions, you can leave those. We will try to answer them. Um, oh. there, there sure are a lot of other things that we just didn't get to cover because there there's so much that goes on in this storyline. But this is already so long. Um, yeah. You know, and uh, I think I can try to solve it, maybe. Maybe. Maybe, if I figure it out how, if I figure out how to do subtitles, this video may have subtitles. We'll see. We'll see. Um, so yeah. But yeah, that's it for now. So, uh, goodbye, I guess. Oh my god. Don't end it like yeah, that. Enjoy. <laughs> I mean, thank you guys so much for yes. all the support of our characters and our story. Um, hope you guys stick around for future projects. Uh, you are going to be working on an animation meme yeah. real soon. Uh, featuring a lot of your characters yeah. and uh, you know got a lot of stuff planned for the future stay tuned for uh, several other um, yeah. all about all abouts follow us on tumblr instagram that sort of stuff I have a patreon um, be linked in the description yeah, yeah. and uh, see you guys around bye